top of the World Trade Center building, the major fire. Hey, can you look out your window right now? Yeah, can you, can you see God about the S September 11th, 2001 was a time like no other in, in history. You know, the news was just coming in, we are seeing what was happening, and uh, the airspace being closed was absolutely unprecedented. You know, from an operations perspective, wasn't in our playbook. You know, we'd never done this before. At that point, we kind of looked at each other and said, it's gonna be a different day today. We should probably get ready and start thinking about what this might mean. That's another situation. Another one just hit the building. Wow. But then when we got news that uh, we would be getting diverting aircraft, now our plans turn to, okay, how are we gonna handle those? Not knowing how many additional planes were gonna be coming to the airport, where would we put them? What would we do with the passengers? What would we do with the crew? And so we started to make those plans. And that's when it really hit us like, it's gonna be massive chaos in the arrivals halls and baggage halls. So at that point, we were like all hands on deck, put our pens down, put on our vests and get on the floor with everybody else. Some of the challenges were every US carrier or flight that had diverted from the States had to be screened. Right? It wasn't an easy thing to do because the planes had to be inspected, right? Everybody had to be screened, the cargo had to be screened, so it was laborious. It was not uncommon for five, six, seven, eight hours to be stuck on a plane. The crew and the passengers on board the aircraft had no knowledge on why they had just landed at Vancouver Airport. They were just told you needed to put down at the closest airport and they were directed by air traffic control to land at Vancouver Airport. And obviously on the planes in those days, people didn't have iPhones and didn't have access to the internet. So uh, our vice president of operations at the time, we uh, got him out in a vehicle and got him a headset and he actually plugged into the aircraft, many aircraft and talked to the crew. And, uh, sorry. Once the order came down to land all the airplanes, they had to land. So we ended up seeing all kinds of tales here that we'd never seen before. And we had people from our offices who came to help our regular airport operations agent to answer the telephone as we were getting so many phone calls from all over the world um, for people who were looking for their loved ones and which airport they had gone to. Vancouver International Airport is eerily silent today. The more than 900 flights that normally roar in and out of this airport every day grounded in the wake of yesterday's terrorist attack in the States. 110 aircraft are stranded on the tarmac. From the 11th through the 13th, we had hundreds of people coming to the airport to volunteer to help us. We had all the airlines collaborating. We had everybody at the airport supporting, you know, working together. Uh, the terminal quickly got so full, we set up a queuing area on the sidewalk. And when we found out we were running out of room there, um, quickly made the decision to turn our parkade here into a terminal. And so many of our staff were just out here, you know, ensuring everyone was safe and ensuring everyone was cared for. Obviously when a lot of passengers arrived, a lot of confusion, uncertainty as to where they were going to go next, where would they be staying over, how they would get back home to their home communities. Um, but I think the general community was very supportive in many ways to help alleviate the stress and distress during this very uncertain time. People had access to food, people had access to blankets. Um, it was a real community effort. Uh, we had people billeted in Squamish and out in Abbotsford and people offering their homes for people to stay in. This was an extraordinary experience and um, one of my fondest memories was the Salvation Army um, parked a truck just over by the Graham Clark Atrium and we're making hot made-to-order grilled cheese sandwiches. I was proud of the way that the airport authority and the airlines and the ground handlers all came together. Like everyone really rose to the occasion. 
we also have to, of course, um, recognize the many lives that were lost during that time, but I also think it brings out the best in the human spirit. And to see the airport community come along with the general community and provide support uh, for these stranded passengers was really gratifying to be part of. Looking back on 20 years, you really do remember the, the good parts of it, but it was the same group of people working together the same way we, we do today for Vancouver Airport.